Hey, what's going on? It's your man, Louis T here. <laughs> In editing this video, I realized that instead of me doing pups, I did cats. The theme of this is dogs and pups. Uh, I didn't mean to call everybody's performance or certain aspects of the game cats. I meant to call them pups. You know, they're not dogs, they're pups. But in, in, for this, in the spirit of this particular episode, they're cats. But moving forward, it's going to be pups. All right. Um, cats is a little bit too feminine, right? It's a little too soft. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, but I'm not doing the video over. <laughs> I already did it. And those of you who know me, uh, I'm, as, I'm petty when it comes to this type of stuff. If I've already done it, I'm not doing it again. And so I, I could do this over again, but I'm not. So enjoy the video. And um, moving forward, after this episode, it will be dogs and pups, not dogs and cats. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Enjoy the video. Who else could be? But me, your man, Louis T. Welcome to this Louis T. Network exclusive. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters as well as my members of the MOBB. You guys are the lifeline of the Louis T. Network. Um, this is a free trial, so don't fret if you are not a member of the MOBB or Patreon. Um, you're supposed to be watching this. Week one is always a free trial to give you a little taste of what you can be getting if you become a member of the MOBB or if you jump on and help on Patreon. With that said, um, week one was very eventful. Um, there were ups, there were downs, there were things that we can do so much better. But at the end of the day, um, this team found a way to win 20 to 16 against the Arizona Cardinals. With that said, um, there were some standout performances. There were some things that we didn't like. And because of that, we got dogs and we got pups. And so we're looking for dog performances every single week. We want the dogs to stand up. And announce themselves and we want the pups to stay in the back and um, not show themselves right we, we want dog performances on a weekly basis and so with that said before we get to the, the players the situations the things that happened in this game that were dog like <laughs> um, let's get to some honorable mention first that didn't make either list were kind of in the middle um, and so didn't make either list but uh, they do need to be mentioned, right? Let's start with Sam Howe, the quarterback. Um, I didn't think his performance was dog-like, and I didn't think he was a pup in this game either. He made just enough plays to stay off of the pup list, um, and he, he didn't make enough plays or turned it over or made enough mistakes to, to not be on the dog list, right? Um, th this was a solid as I mentioned this was a C performance which puts you right smack dab in the middle where I have him um, and, and so for me um, he's going to be better and this it was the first start of his NFL career as the guy second career overall start you know and so I expect better from him but it was a rough go of it in his first career NFL start with the sacks the turnovers you know, the missed opportunities. These are things that we expect him to correct and clean up. And again, time on task is important. The more you do something, the better you get at it. This is his first exposure to EB's offense in an actual NFL game. They didn't have a ton of film on the Arizona Cardinals. And so they really didn't know what to expect from a defensive standpoint. I think they blitzed a lot more than Washington was expecting because Jonathan Gannon didn't blitz in Philadelphia a whole hell of a lot. So... Um, there were different looks that they got. There were things that happened in this game that they didn't account for. And um, at the end of the day, Sam was solid. He can be better. And I think he will uh, moving forward. But uh, he's an honorable mention. Jameson Crowder. JC Ice. Yeah. Nothing's better than Ice. JC Ice. Good to have him back. But, you know, I would prefer my JC Ice on the sidelines, cooling, right? But uh, because of Dax Milne's injury, he was thrusted into action to return punts, uh, and he did a solid job. You know, he didn't muff anything. He didn't do anything stupid. Doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. I'm hoping that he does exactly what he did in this game moving forward um, if he's going to continue to, to hold that role as punt returner. But um, look, I'm not going to sit here and belabor the point. 
he did his job. He didn't do anything to um, impact the game one way or the other. And it's fine by me. Just don't negatively impact the game. That's all I ask. He didn't do that. So he bears mentioning. Brian Robinson. Um, I felt like he could have been more involved in this football game. Um, especially before the Cardinals knew we were going to run the ball every single play and, and were there to stop it, which really made his average in the game look really suspect. But um, I thought he could have been involved a little bit more earlier in the ball game. That said, uh, he did drop a screen, right? Um, he had a nice run at the end of the game that didn't count because John Bates was flagged for holding. Uh, so he had a great touchdown grab, which was huge. The first touchdown of the season for the commanders this year. Um, but also, you know, he didn't really do anything to move the needle per se, other than the touchdown grab. So I think he can be more impactful, but he also did enough to help this football team win in week one. And so I think he's an honorable mention. And then the wide receiver position, it, you know, I thought they did some good things with the targets that they did have. Terry drew the pass interference penalty that helped set up the first touchdown of the game. Um, Jahan had, you know, five catches. Curtis had, you know, four or five catches, a big catch right before the half to set up the field goal that, you know, kind of wrestled back a little bit of the momentum that had been lost from the sack force fumble scoop and score by the Cardinals on Sam. And then, you know, t I thought Terry was really good in his, you know, limited opportunities uh, in the game. So I thought the receiver position as a whole was solid, but they didn't move the needle like we expect them to. They're too good of a group to not move the needle and be on the dog list or at least have one of these guys be on that list. And so um, they're an honorable uh, honorable mention because um, a lot of what happened in the game probably wasn't their fault. They were open or they didn't get the football because there was breakdown and protection, things of that nature. Uh, and, and again, credit the Arizona Cardinals, but um, I expect more from the wide receiver position. So um, with that said, let's get to the dogs. <laughs> Um, and and the, the biggest of the dogs, the big dogs, um, guarding and protecting the commander's porch right now is the entire defense. Um, this defense, and, and I, you know, we can single out individual performance, uh, performances and performers, but the defense as a whole uh, was outstanding. To not surrender a single touchdown in the entire game, to hold your opponent to 4 of 14 on third downs, um, to have as many tackles for loss that they had throughout the game. to ha And again, at least a tackle for loss or a sack, which a sack is a tackle for loss as well, uh, but they're in a separate category. But to have one or both on 10 out of the 11 possessions in the game for Arizona on the offensive side of the football is spectacular for this defense. Um, to have the two turnovers that they forced to lead to uh, 10 points, which was the 10 points that ultimately decided the game in the fourth quarter um, to not allow a single point uh, by the Arizona Cardinals after the initial drive of the third quarter to completely shut that faucet off and be dominant for the, the latter half of the game uh, was spectacular. And obviously Montez Sweat and his sack and a half and two force fumbles sticks out. Obviously, Jonathan Allen, his uh, sack and his tackle for loss sticks out. Obviously, Deron Payne and his two tackles for loss and, and multiple uh, efforts in the backfield stick out like a sore thumb. Casey Tuhill had a tackle for loss. James Smith-Williams had a half a sack. I mean, you know, e even um, the uh, defensive tackle that we signed in the offseason, Anderson, you know, Adula Anderson stepped up and I thought played uh, some quality snaps for us in this game. The entire defensive line was stellar. Um, I thought the linebackers were solid. Nothing earth shattering from them, but no, you know, egregious mistakes that cost us. Um, and then the secondary was fantastic. Kendall Fuller was absolutely outstanding. Um, and then, you know, the rookie comes up with a huge play at the end of the game, essentially running the route for the wide, the rookie wide receiver, Wilson out of Stanford, and almost picking that thing off. Um, if there's any knock on the defense is that they didn't come away with some of those interception opportunities that presented themselves, but uh, that, you're nitpicking at this point. Um, the defense was stellar in this game, and they were the biggest of the dogs <laughs> in week number one. Um, so now you get to the next dog or dogs in this game. And it's Tressway, Joey Sly, and Jeremy Reeves. That 
that trio on special teams was outstanding in week number one. You start with Tressway. Um, the punts, we know what he's capable of there in that regard. He had one punt that absolutely flipped the field position, and it was huge because at that time, the game was still in the balance. I think it was 17 to 16 at that point. We had just taken the lead. I uh, had an opportunity to really put our foot on the throats of the Cardinals. Couldn't convert. Um, they called, I thought, uh, a bad. they had a bad spot on the Antonio Gibson screen. But we had to punt. And Tress booms his best kick of the day. Pinned the Cardinals inside their own 15-yard line. And the defense took it from there. And that's when you get the Montez Sweat, forced fumble, the second of the day, and the subsequent field goal. So Tressway, and then not only that, Tress had to be a uh, first baseman uh, back there fielding snaps from Cameron Cheeseman, one down in the grass, one up near his helmet. And he put both of them down and allowed uh, the next guy that we're going to talk about here, Joey Slide, to deposit them through the uprights. Joey Slide made all of his kicks in the game, um, two for two in the field goal department, made his um, two extra points as well. So, again, on a day where it's wet, it's nasty, the snaps aren't great, the operation isn't perfect for Joey Sly to go out there and do his job. All kicks um, in the kickoff game were touchbacks. Joey Sly was outstanding. Don't want to diminish what he did because they weren't long field goals. We know he can miss a 33-yarder. He did it last year several times because he missed a bunch of extra points. But he deposited all those field goals. He deposited all the extra points. He kicked the ball off well. Uh, on a day that it was wet, uh, on a day where the operation wasn't the cleanest, Joey Sly did his job. He's a Sly guy. Doo -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo. And finally, Jeremy Reeves, All-Pro Revo, showed exactly why. He's known as All Pro Revo. He was down on just about every single special teams tackle there was in this game. And he got the crowd amped. He was involved. I love his energy. It's infectious. And that's the kind of play we're going to need from him as a captain on this team moving forward. Um, and his, his, his story is being chronicled on ESPN, I believe, or NFL Network uh, tonight. So check that out. Support one of our own. And... Um, uh, get a load of his story and, and really see um, how Jeremy Reeves came to be in the league as a core member of the Washington Commanders. So that was another group there of dogs. <laughs> and lastly, overcoming adversity, I thought, was was really big for us in this game. And that was the last dog of this game. <laughs> um, there was a ton of adversity in this game, obviously. I don't have to tell you that. You know. But um, I don't think there was any more adverse situation in the game for Washington than the fumble, scoop, and score by the Cardinals um, that put them up in this game 13-7 to right before the half. Washington got the football, thought we were going to move it down the field and get into either field goal range or a touchdown like we had done in the two-minute drill before the half against the Ravens. And the Cardinals had other ideas. Sam, careless with the football, is hit, fumbles the ball. It's scooped up, scored by the Arizona Cardinals. And at that point, you're sitting there. Your draw is probably hitting the floor. And you're thinking, oh, my God, this can't be. We're losing to the Arizona Cardinals at halftime. And I'm sick to my stomach. This is not how week one was supposed to go. And it, it could have easily turned into woe is me. Here we go again. Same old commanders, right? And Sam he rallies the troops. They go down the field, throws a strike to uh, Curtis Samuel, who catches it, gets up the field, tackled out of bounds, gets you in the field goal range. I, I actually hated the conservative nature of the next snap, which was to run off clock and throw it out of bounds to kick the field goal. I would have liked to have seen one attempt to the end zone, to one of your big targets, Cole Turner, Logan Thomas, somebody with a little bit of size, and just see, see what you can do, right? Post up a smaller defender, throw it up on the top shelf and see if they can get it. But they opted to throw it away. That is, it is what it is. Um, but that was a big play. I mean, it got us three points before the half, cut that deficit in half from six to three, and it wrestled back a little bit of the momentum, right? You felt a lot less of the sting of that turnover because of the field goal that they got before the half. And then obviously giving it right back to start the third quarter and, and, and having the Cardinals go down the field, get the field goal again, no more turnovers, but they didn't do anything necessarily to change the game. But 
when they had the opportunities after the defense made the plays, they took advantage of them and made plays there. Um, the, the interception in the first half could have given up a touchdown there. They didn't. They, they bowed their backs or their necks, as Ron likes to say, and they only gave up a field goal. So um, this game could have been a lot worse, but we overcame adversity multiple times in this game, and that ultimately is what helped decide the outcome as Washington got it done 20-16. to 16. Um, that to me was a dog in week one <laughs> and it's going to need to be moving forward. So now let's get to the cats. Meow. Let's get to the things that we didn't like in week number one. And I, I'm going to start with the tight end position. So um, as a whole, I'm not going to single anybody out. I know everybody's killing Logan Thomas right now and that's fine, but he wasn't the only culprit within this group. John Bates had two big time penalties. Again, I think both of them, you could argue, were bogus. One in particular, the OPI was garbage, but it is what it is. They called it. What can you do? It killed the drive, right? Uh, so you got the two penalties on Bates. Um, you got the, you know, couple of drops by Logan Thomas, who wasn't, you know, you know, his best in this game. And then, you know, Cole Turner just really never had an opportunity, didn't get enough snaps, if you ask me, to make the impact that we know he's fully capable of making. And so, you know what it felt like? It felt like last year's impact from the tight end position. And that's not what we're looking for. Last year, the tight end position was pretty much non-existent with this team. We got nothing out of the tight end position as a whole last year under Scott Turner. We said that that was going to change under Eric Bieniemy because this was such a tight end-centric offense and that we were going to see an uptick in production from that group. And, and maybe we will if Logan Thomas catches the ball. Maybe we will if Cole Turner gets more opportunities. Because Logan Thomas was targeted seven or eight times in this game. So, again, it just felt a lot like last year in terms of the impact on the game. It was more negative than positive, And that's not what we're looking for. I thought the tight end position was definitely a cat in this game. Meow. Um, the turnovers was a cat in this game. Meow can't have it you can't have the turnovers and expect to win consistently in this league that was a problem for this team last year we turned it over way more than we actually forced turnovers we were a negative last year in the plus minus category at seasons and that's a losing recipe if you want to be mediocre find yourself in the negative you know at the end of the season in the plus minus category and you'll find yourself at seven and ten seven nine and one eight, eight and one or eight and, and nine at the end of the season, right? That if you are looking for that, that's how you achieve it. We cannot turn the football over the way that we did in week one and expect to beat opponents consistently throughout this season. And so got to clean that up, can't have the mistakes. And I expect them to be better. It was week one and a lot of teams around the league um, turned it over and looked sloppy in week one. No excuses. We don't have to be like everybody else. We have to be better. The turnovers were definitely disappointing in week number one. The conservative red zone approach was something that I did not appreciate in this game. There were two opportunities. Washington had five red zone possessions in week number one. They scored a touchdown on two of them, leaving three open-ended uh, red zone opportunities. Um, one uh, and two of them, they converted to field goals. One, they turned it over with the Antonio Gibson fumble. I thought the two field goals were, look, one was probably going to happen more likely than not. The one before the half, I, I'm, I'm nitpicking, but aggressive teams in that uh, um, situation with eight seconds left, you take a shot at the end zone. There's, there's no reason for you to not take one right there. You, you got plenty of time to get down there um, and, and, and give your guy a chance in the end zone. If you get the look you're looking for, if you don't throw it out of the back end zone, just like you did. But um, I thought there was an opportunity missed there to try to be aggressive and maybe steal a touchdown back from Arizona. And then, of course, after the turnover that was forced by Montez Sweat, we ran it three straight times and then kicked a field goal instead of being aggressive. Even if you don't score a touchdown, you run off clock there. You force Arizona to use their timeouts. Maybe they didn't never even see the football again. Who knows? Right. But instead, you went conservative mode, run, 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 kick, and you went up four. Again, nothing wrong with that approach because of the opponent you were playing and you knew that you were going to be able to keep them out of the end zone. However, I feel like you need to be preparing yourself for what this team is going to be all season long, which is aggressive in those types of spots. You're not going to play a lot of teams that are offensive deficient like the Cardinals are. You're going to need points to win more weeks than not. 
And I thought you should be developing that mentality in your players' minds now by going for the jugular in that particular instance. They didn't. I did not like that red zone approach there, nor the one before the half. Uh, those, to me, were cat-like um, performances, and um, I, don't, I don't really appreciate those. Meow! Uh, another cat performance in this game. The offensive line, uh, that goes without saying. Uh, look, the six sacks are well documented. Everyone's going to put the onus on the offensive line. Uh, I've already told you guys that I think three of those sacks were on Sam Howell, but that doesn't matter. There still was three other sacks that weren't on Sam. And a as a matter of fact, there were other pressures that you know forced erratic throws or missed opportunities. The line was not terrible. Right. But they were they made enough boo boos in the game to land on the cat list. They could have easily been an honorable mention because they weren't terrible. But the reason they ended up here on the cat list meow, is because they didn't do anything in the run game either. And, and that's where I have an issue is that they didn't create an opportunity in the screen game. They didn't create an opportunity in the run game. They didn't make up for some of the shortcomings of the pass protection by doing something somewhere else to help this team along. Run game, screen game, somewhere else they needed to make their mark on this game, and it just simply didn't. OK, there weren't a lot of rush lanes. There weren't a lot of big holes. They, they didn't create space in the screen game. That third down screen that was thrown to Antonio Gibson should have gone for way more than it did. Never should have been even up for debate as whether it was a first down. And I thought Gibson could have done more to make sure that that was a first down. But still, they didn't do enough out on that screen. There were enough bodies out in front that that thing should have never gotten to where it got to. Uh, but at the end of the day, the offensive line needs to be better. And um, that's an understatement. And I think they will be better. And I don't think they were terrible, but they can be a lot better. And I think they will. But they were cats, not dogs. And we need our offensive line to be dogs in the trenches. They were cats in week number one. Cam Cheeseman. Um, look, I, I don't like talking about the long snapper because that means something has gone wrong. And obviously, some things went wrong in week one. We saw it. We saw it in the preseason. We heard about it in camp. This shit has to cease to exist, okay? I need Cam Cheeseman to get his life together. I, I would hate for a guy that they traded up to select in the 2021 draft, I would hate for this guy to be replaced by some Joe Schmo off the street. But if you can't snap the ball back to Tressway in a timely and in a efficient manner, we're going to have to start scouring the streets on one of these Tuesdays to look for a dude that can just do the simple thing and that snap the ball back to the, the holder. Because you're dribbling shit back there, you're, you're snapping it high, now it's becoming a real issue. And as you can see, we still haven't fixed our offensive woes yet. And so every single point matters. Extra points, field goals, we need them all. We're not scoring 34 points yet. So if you miss out on an extra point, ah, we're good. We still scored 33. Should have been 34, but we're good. We're not there yet. Okay? So we need every single point. I just watched the Denver Broncos lose a game 17-16 because they missed an extra point. That's the type of time we're on right now. We can't miss an extra point because we're not scoring no points yet. Need every single one. Can't leave anything on the field. Cam Cheeseman has to get his shit together. He was definitely a cat in this game. Meow. Get your shit together, man. And then lastly, Antonio Gibson was a cat. Meow. Uh, I, I love AG. I, I, I want success. Nothing but the best for him, especially in a contract year. But uh, it was a rough start for him. He didn't give us anything on the one kickoff return that he brought out. Obviously, uh, a huge momentous, a momentous swing in the game was his fumble in the red zone that cost us a scoring opportunity when we really had a chance to maybe put a stranglehold on this game. Um, and, and so that's huge. Um, didn't get the first down on the screen. I, I, you got to get that first down, bro. And I thought he did, but it shouldn't even been up for interpretation. You should have gotten that. There were enough blockers out in front. There was enough space and opportunity. You can't get hit and fall straight down and, and end up with a spot that allows the referees to say that you were short. You got to get that first down, bro. Um, I thought he missed a big-ass run lane. Uh, on, a, on a play where I thought the offensive line blocked it up and he needed to cut it back to the left. And he just ran up in the pile and put his head down and got like next to nothing. Um, I, I don't 
think they utilized him properly in terms of, you know, getting him out in space, which we always hear Ron talk about every year, and then they get to the game and they don't do it. Uh, but with the opportunities that he received in this game, he didn't do enough with them. Period. Point blank. And so um, he was a cat in this game, and I'm going to need him to be better. He's the only running back that we have that has explosiveness. He can't be a liability on the field. We need him to be better, period. But he was a cat in week one. Meow. So that's going to do it for me, your man Louis T, here with dogs <laughs> and cats. Meow. Week one edition versus the Arizona Cardinals. We'll do this every single week for the mob and those on Patreon. So if you're not a member of the mob or you're not on Patreon, what are you waiting for? Don't sit on the sideline. Get in the game. I appreciate each and every single one of you. As I mentioned, mob Patreon members, you are the lifeline of the Louis T Network. To you, I say salute. And until next time, y'all know what it is. Have a good one. Take care. Louis T.